This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey, gang, and welcome back. Hopefully, I'm not too nasally since I'm still recovering from COVID, but that's not going to stop me from bringing you a sweet game for today. In today's game, we have newcomer Justin playing his Rickmethy's deck, keeping a forest, an island, counterspell, talisman of curiosity, spawning kraken, shipbreaker kraken, and slim voda the rising deep. Corwin is rocking Rem Kyrolos, keeping Chandra's incinerator, sunforger, mountain, solar blaze, Mizium mortars, planes, and Valakut the molten pinnacle. Charles is back and he wants to play Zancha again, keeping Baron Moor. Stormfist Crusader, Curtain's Call, Mountain, Sire of Insanity, Thran Turbine, and a Death Kiss. Last but not least, I have built the new Nahiri, and I keep two snow covered planes, Great Furnace, Bladehold War Whip, Buried Ruin, Nettle Cyst, and a Forgotten Cave. Justin wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a forest. Corwin plays a tap Valakut. Charles draws and plays a tap Baron Moor. I just have a snow covered plains and I pass. Justin plays an island and taps two for Talisman of Curiosity. Corwin plays a mountain. Charles draws and then casts a Storm Fist Crusader. I draw and play a tap Needle Spires. Justin plays a Forest and is able to cast his commander, Eryxmethes, who comes in with some Slumber Counters as a land. Corwin plays a Mountain for turn and pays 3 for Sunforger, passing after that. We each draw one and take one from the Stormfist Crusader on Charles's upkeep, and he then draws for turn. He then casts a Thran Turbine, but with no land to play, has to pass. I play a Buried Ruin, and then cast a Bladehold War Whip. I get to make a Rebel token with it, and pass to Justin after that. Justin draws and plays an Island. He then casts a Spawning Kraken, and takes a counter off of Rickthmethes, passing to Corwin. Corwin draws and then plays a Flagstones of Trocair. He then casts his commander Rem Karolos and goes to combat. He swings his commander, dealing 2 to Charles, and passes after that. On Charles' upkeep we each lose one and draw one thanks to the Crusader, and then Charles draws for turn. He plays a Swamp and goes to combat, swinging the Crusader at me and dealing 2. In his second main phase, Charles plays up Zancha, and has her coming in under my control, passing. I draw and play a Plains. I cast a Shadow Spear and equip it onto Zancha. I then use Source to Plowshares to take out the Spawning Kraken and move to combat. I swing Zancha at Corwin and the Rebel token at Justin, and they both take their hits and I gain some life. In my post-combat main phase, I cast a Colossus Hammer and pass. Justin draws and plays a Forest. He then plays Shipbreaker Kraken and removes another counter from his commander and passes after that. Corwin draws and plays a Fury Calm Snarl, revealing a land with a relevant type so it comes in untapped. He then equips the Sunforger to Rem Karolos and goes to combat. He swings his commander at me, dealing 6, and after combat, Unequip Sunforger to cast Jeska's Will, getting 7 red mana and exiling his top 3. He has to choose between casting Torolf and Torbrand, and he goes with casting Torolf. With his 3 remaining mana left over, he casts a Crawl Space and passes. On Charles's upkeep thanks to his Crusader, we each draw one and lose one, and he then draws for turn. He plays a Foreboding Ruins, revealing a Swamp, and then casts Thran Dynamo. He passes after that. 
I draw and play Great Furnace. I then cast Nahiri and go to combat. I swing Zanchek Corwin and the Rebel at Charles. I also get to exile my top two cards thanks to Nahiri seeing equipped creatures attacking. And after Corwin declares no blocks, I cast a Boros Charm to give Zanchek double strike. Corwin then takes 12 and I gain 12. And after that, I pass. Justin draws and plays an Arcane Signet. He then casts a Murkfiend Liege and plays a Misty Rainforest, cracking it to find an island. He then wraps up his turn casting a Nimbus Swimmer, putting one into the X, and that removes the last counter from Arithmeses, and it's now a creature. Corwin draws and plays a Reflecting Pool. He then plays a Solar Blaze, and Charles responds by activating Zancha to draw a card and has me lose two. Justin also responds to that by tapping Arithmeses to cast Cyclonic Rift and bounces Tarolf back to Corwin's hand. The board whip then resolves. Going to combat, Corwin swings Rem Carlos at me again, dealing two and passing. Charles has a swamp for turn and then plays Tome of Legends and recasts Zancha, this time giving her to Corwin. Charles uses the extra floating mana to draw a card from the Tome of Legends, removing a counter from it and passing. I draw and play a Forgotten Cave. I then play out Jorkadeen, First Gold Warden, and suit him up with a Shadow Spear and pass. Justin just draws and plays an island, he then recasts Arithmeses and passes. Corwin plays a Command Tower and then casts a Mindclaw Shaman. Choosing Charles as it enters, this lets him cast an instant or sorcery from his hand and he doesn't have much choice, picking Night Whispers to draw two and lose two. Going to combat, Corwin once more swings Ram Carlos at me and Zancha goes at Justin and we both take our hits. In his post-combat main phase, Corwin casts a Winds of Change to try and get us all a new hand, but Justin responds with a counterspell. After that, Corwin passes. Charles uses his mana for his Thran Turbine on his upkeep to help activate the Tome of Legends and draws, and then draws for turn. He plays a Swamp for turn, and then casts Gaunti, which as it enters, has him choosing Justin. He gets to keep a card from Justin's top 4 in exile, and Charles then casts Rankle. Going to combat, Charles swings Rankle at me, and I take the hit. He then picks the modes to make us all discard a card, and then lose a life and draw a card. With nothing else, Charles passes. I've got a Dark Seal Citadel as my land for turn, I then move the Bladehold War Whip onto Jorkadeen, and I play a thorough investigation. Going to combat, I swing Jorkadeen at Charles to draw a card off its trigger, and then I smack him for 8 with lifelink. I also get a clue token from attacking, and after that, I pass. Justin draws and plays Slin Voda with Kicker to bounce all non-other Serpenty creatures back to their owner's hands. He then passes to Corwin after that. Corwin draws and plays a Phyrexian Vindicator. He follows up with Mangara the Diplomat and passes to Charles. Charles uses the Turbine Mana once more to activate the Tome of Legends, removing a counter to draw, and draws for turn. He then plays a Swamp and casts a Curtain's Call, taking out the Vindicator and Slim Voda. He then replays Zancha again and gives it to Corwin. He then casts Gaunti again, and once more picks Justin for the target. After that, he passes to me. I draw and play a Stoneforge Mystic, tutoring up a Sword of Feast and Famine. I then cast a Swiftfoot Boots and equip them onto the Stoneforge Mystic for free thanks to the War Whip. I follow that up with a Recruiter of the Guard, and I go into my library grabbing a Pure Steel Paladin and I pass to Justin after that. 
Justin draws, but has nothing to do and has to pass. Corwin plays a planes, and then replays his commander and equips a Sunforger onto Zancha. Going to combat, Corwin swings Zancha at Justin, and with no blockers, Justin has to take the hit. In his second main phase, Corwin unequips the Sunforger to go and find Price of Progress and cast it, dealing two to us for each non-basic we have, except for Corwin, who takes nothing because of his commander. Corwin then casts a Mana Clash and chooses me as his Clasher. We each flip a coin, and unfortunately for Corwin, we both hit heads immediately, and with nothing else, Corwin passes. Charles draws off the Tome once more, and then draws for turn. He plays a Thespian Stage from among Gonti's exiled cards, and follows it up with a Hearthstone and then a Cold Steel Heart, naming Red. He finishes up with a Sire of Insanity, and we move to his end step. This has us all discarding our hands, and we then move to my turn. I draw and cast Bruner Battle Hammer, and use his first free equip to suit him up with the Colossus Hammer. I then equip the Shadow Spear and the Swift Foot Boots to him, and move to combat. I swing Bruner at Charles for 22 with Lifelink and Trample, and he double blocks with the Sire and Gaunti, but still drops to 4. I gain 22 life, but sadly Bruner also dies in combat because of the death touch. After that, I pass. Justin draws and plays a forest, but with no cards in hand, has to pass. Corwin draws and once more equips a Sunforger onto Rem Karolos and goes to combat. He swings Rem at me and Mengara at Charles. Justin responds by activating Zanch to ping Corwin for 2 and draw a card, and then does it 4 more times. No one declares any blocks, and we then take our hits. In his second main phase, Corwin unattaches Sunforger to go and grab Valakut Awakening, bottoming his hand, and drawing two cards. He then plays a Mirage Mirror, and then a land tax, and passes to Charles. Charles uses the mana from the Thran Turbine on his upkeep to draw a card from the Tome of Legends, and then pays to draw with Zancha. He then draws for turn, and uses Zancha to draw another card. Charles then casts an Ember Wild Captain, becoming the Monarch, and passing, drawing again at the end of his turn. I activate Zancha on my upkeep to kill Corwin, and Charles responds by activating Zancha first to draw before I do. I then draw for turn, and cast a Sword of Hearth and Home, which I equip onto the Stoneforge Mystic. I suit up the Mystic with a Shadow Spear and Swiftfoot Boots, and go to combat. I swing the Mystic at Charles, taking one from the Captain, and Charles blocks the Captain as well. He still takes some damage thanks to the Trample, dropping to one, while I gain four. I then use the Sword Trigger to get a Mountain and flick a Recruit of the Guard, which as it comes in, goes to Tutor for Arden and puts it to my hand. After that, I pass to Justin. Justin draws and casts a Thought Vessel, removing a counter from Erykthmethes. He then plays Lurking Predators and Oko, which removes the final counter from his commander. He then upticks Oko, turning the Shadow Spear into an Elk, and passes to Charles after that. Charles draws at the Tomb of Legends, and then draws for turn. He casts Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, and upticks the Walker, exiling his opponent's top card. He then casts Inundate from Tybalt to bounce all non-blue creatures, and Justin gets a Lurking Predator's trigger. This has Justin revealing a Modi, which goes onto the battlefield, and he passes after that. I draw and place a Guard as Aid, and then cast Arden and replay Shadow Spear, which automatically equips it onto Arden. I then follow up with the Lockset on Warhammer, which also goes onto him, and I then move to combat. I move all the equipment onto Arden, and we remember to do Justin's Lurking Predator flips, which reveals a Lightning Greaves, unfortunately. 
I then swing Arden at Justin for a total of 32 damage, which takes him out and puts me to 71. After that, I pass turn. Charles draws and activates Tybalt again, excelling my top card, but finds nothing that can save him, decides to scoop it up so he can do another game. Game review time. So considering I only got to cast Nahiri once and I got to exile two cards from her, I like the deck a lot, which is saying something. Being able to reduce her cost for how many equipment I have on the field is a lot of fun, plus casting free equipment will be great should I ever do it. I've got a stack of a bunch of cards that I'd love to test out, so I'm hoping to play this again soon. I wasn't the only Boros player at the table, and Rem Karolos is always an interesting one to see. I love the effects that he has where he adds extra damage to spells while saving himself from some, as it takes away some of the pain of those red spells that deal damage to everything. Things like Earthquake suddenly become much better, and they're always fun to see. I like these kind of commanders that think outside of the box. With Boros typically being based around combat step, it's fun to see something that's based around sorcery and instance. Charles did a lot better with Xantia this time around, and even though he drew a bunch of cards, it seemed like he wasn't actually drawing what he wanted. He needed better spot removal, or at least something to help forward his board state, and all he seemed to get was a lot of mana. Justin on their hand had a lot of mana, but unfortunately by mid-game seemed to be running out of cards. I'm surprised he wasn't activating Xantia more to try and fill up his hand, but I guess all those serpents, leviathans, and krakens were a bit too expensive to cast in multiples on a turn. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Card, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.